couple of young kings are signed and looking to make their mark in the NHL. We discuss that and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment and positive feedback on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we're on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years of the Fox Sports Radio Network, also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the last 17 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a bonus of bonuses daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We are just four days away from the NHL draft. The Kings hold the 21st selection in the first round, and we are one week away from the start of free agency. With that in mind, the Kings made a pair of moves since our last show, signing restricted free agent forwards Alex Turcotte and Samuel Fogimo. Turcotte gets a three-year deal worth $2.325 million. His average annual value is $775,000 through the 2026-27 season. Last season, the 23-year-old played 35 games for the Ontario Reign with 10 goals and 19 assists for 29 points and 20 games for the LA Kings with one goal and three assists for four points in his first NHL action of his career. A lot was expected of Turcotte when the Kings selected him with the fifth overall pick in 2019. So far, he has not shown that he can be a reliable part of an NHL lineup every day, but that could change soon. To be fair to Turcotte, injuries have been unfortunately a big part of his career so far. He had a shoulder injury. He's likely had more than one concussion, even an appendicitis uh, put in the mix as well. That certainly hasn't helped his development or his opportunities to show what he can do. Of the 31 players selected in the first round of the 2019 entry draft, only four players have played fewer NHL games in their career so far than Alex Turcotte. In 2020-21, he played a total of 32 games. In 2021-22, he played a total of 35 games. 2022-23, he played 38 games all due to various injury and illness issues. 55 games last season in both Ontario and LA combined, obviously, were a career high. And hopefully that this past season is an indication that for the most part, Turcotte has put his injury issues behind him and he's ready to take advantage of what should be an opportunity to be a full-time NHL player this coming season. The three-year deal at $775,000 is a low-risk contract. If things work out the way he and the Kings hope, he can look to cash in after three seasons. Um, it remains to be seen, obviously, if Turcotte can turn into a top six forward. But I feel pretty confident that if he can play a significant amount of time, that he can at least be a solid bottom six forward. Now, he does fit the bill of a fourth liner right now. He's young, energetic, hungry, and not afraid to hit. He'll forecheck and he'll make things happen, which is what you're looking for in your fourth line guys, your energy guys. Um, if he can put up numbers and play that type of a style, maybe down the road he could get a bigger role. Who knows? Um, I think Gabe Velarde is a decent example of a player who was obviously picked uh, high in the draft by the Kings, had some injury issues, but eventually got his opportunity and has turned into a solid, a solid top six forward. Hopefully that could be the blueprint. For Alex Turcotte, but that's the future right now for Alex Turcotte. He's ready to get his chance this coming season. Hopefully he can stay healthy, make the most of it, and this can be kind of the foundation for his NHL career. As for Samuel Fogimo, he's 24. He gets a one-year deal, also worth $775,000. Uh, he played 50 games for the Ontario Reign this past season, scored 43 goals with 19 assists for 62 points. The goals and points were by far and away a new career high for him. 
Fagimo finished second in the AHL as far as goal score, just one behind the league league, uh, league scoring champion. And his 19 power play goals were the most in the AHL last season. That's certainly something the Kings are probably going to take a hard look at as far as maybe him trying to help out on their power play. Now, Fagimo had uh, scored his first career NHL goal this past season when he played eight NHL games, four with the Kings and four with the Nashville Predators, who you might remember, picked Fagimo up off of waivers uh, from the Kings, only to see LA reacquire him off waivers from Nashville later in the season. Uh, Fagimo is a former second-round pick of the Kings, also like Turcotte in the 2019 draft. He can, if, if he can carry over the scoring touch, he showed in the AHL to the NHL. Obviously, that could make him a very valuable player. That remains to be seen. Obviously, the AHL and the NHL are quite different levels and a big step up for him. But clearly, he has shown he can be an elite goal scorer at the AHL level. Can he get enough minutes? Can he get enough opportunities to show that he can do something like that at the NHL level? We'll see. Um, I would say from a purely production standpoint, it's not hard to imagine for me Guys like Turcotte, Akil Thomas, and Foggy Mode duplicating similar numbers than what the Kings were able to get from their fourth liners over the last year. That is, of course, if they get the opportunity and if they can stay healthy. Now, last season, the Kings had Blake Lazat, Carl Grundstrom, and Trevor Lewis play the bulk of the minutes on the fourth line. In 63 games, Lazat had seven goals and eight assists for 15 points. In 50 games, Grundstrom had eight goals and four assists for 12 points. And in 82 games, Trevor Lewis had eight goals and eight assists for 16 points. It's not hard to imagine, uh, certainly Fogimo in particular, and I think Thomas and 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 Turcotte as well, uh, could duplicate those kind of numbers. Now, do they have the all-around skills, potentially, of those guys? Look, probably not, um, because those other players all had NHL experience. They know what it takes to perform at the NHL level. Guys like... Turcotte and Thomas and Fogimo still have to figure that out. Um, but I think it's their time. I think the Kings have alluded to the fact it's time for some of the guys like we, the three, three players we've mentioned to get their ice time and to prove whether they're going to be NHL contributors or not. And again, in particular for Fogimo, I think he, he's a right-handed shot, uh, something the Kings need on their power plays. And I would be very surprised if, if he is able to make the club and get some playing time. I would be surprised if he does not get some decent minutes on the Kings second power play unit. Now GM Rob Blake did mention Alex Turcotte by name in both of his postseason press conferences, um, talking about some of the young guys getting a chance to be NHL comp- contributors this coming season. And again, players like Turcotte and Foggy Moe and Akil Thomas, they should get their opportunities to try and take on roles with the LA Kings this season. Again, probably on the fourth line, but Who knows how it's going to go with those guys. They're going to get their opportunities, and now is their time to make the most of their chances. Now, the Kings have now signed restricted free agents Alex Turcotte, Samuel Fogimo, and Akil Thomas. Um, They also have signed so far Andre Lee, Taylor Ward, Joe Hicketts, Caleb Lawrence, and Atu Jemson. Um, All those players will likely be in the AHL with the Ontario Reign next season, but who knows? Maybe it's possible one of those guys could do an Alex LaFerriere and grab a spot on the NHL roster. I would say at this point, that's unlikely, but rookie camp comes up the preseason. If injuries occur and an opportunity op- opens up, who knows? But uh, again, it looks like Alex Turcott, Samuel Fogimo, and Akil Thomas would be your three leading candidates, so to speak, of guys who have played both, most of their careers in the AHL, have gotten a little bit of a taste of the NHL, and next season could get a big taste of life in the National Hockey League. According to CapFriendly.com, the Kings currently have under $23.5 million in cap space still available. Now, they still have restricted free agents that are unsigned, including forward Quentin Byfield and defenseman Jordan Spence. You've also got forwards Carl Grunstrom, Arthur Kaliev, and Blake Lazat as well. Byfield and Spence are the priorities, and it would make sense that both of them would get re-signed within the next week as the Kings need to know exactly how much cap space they're going to have to spend when the uh, free agency period opens up when you can sign the unrestricted free agents. And that is, again, one week from today on July the 1st. So, you again, the Kings likely, I would expect them to get deals done this week, in particular Quentin Byfield and Jordan Spence, again, so they can know 
what they're going to have to spend going forward. As far as the list of unrestricted free agents that played for the Kings last season, you've got defenseman Matt Roy, forwards Victor Arvidsson, Trevor Lewis, and goalie Cam Talbot and Phoenix Copley. Uh, Certainly you would think with Darcy Kemper, who we're going to talk a little bit later, that that probably has shut the door on Cam Talbot, but that remains to be seen. Uh, I think Talbot, again, could be a very valuable number two goalie for a lot of teams around the NHL. Uh, So obviously there's a lot going on for the Kings this coming week with the draft and with free agency, and we're looking forward to see how it all shakes out, and we'll talk all about it here on Locked on LA Kings. Mentioned goalie Darcy Kemper. He's coming back to LA. We uh, talk about what he had to say about returning to the Kings. That's next here on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. I love sports. I love them so much that I never want them to stop. But FanDuel lets me keep going in sports no matter what's going on with the seasons as the NHL season has now come to a close. All I have to do, though, if I want to keep, you know, in with sports is open up the the, uh, FanDuel app uh, and dream about bets uh, anytime I'm in the mood. You've got Major League Baseball. You've got golf, soccer, NASCAR. And it's never too easy to get in on placing a bet on your favorite NFL team and how they're going to do this coming season. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sports betting is not yet legal in California. However, you can still sign up at FanDuel, browse the latest betting odds of your favorite sports and teams on the Sportsbook app, and get on the action from anywhere with their free games featuring real cash prizes. No matter where you are in the Golden State, there will be plenty of options to back the underdog or the favorite when sports betting becomes available. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking you up, all you customers, with a boost and a bonus daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make the most out of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Well, new Kings goalie Darcy Kemper held a press conference uh, with the media uh, this past Friday, a conference call. And we didn't get too much into it this past Friday because we had uh, a full show of reaction from Kings fans about the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade uh, during our usual Friday fan feedback show. But now we have time to get into it and uh, talk about what Darcy Kemper had to say about returning to Los Angeles. And he had a pretty funny story to share about how he learned about the trade. He said he was taking a shower and his wife came in the bathroom and said, I think we just got traded. Uh, So that was how he found out the news that he was coming back from LA. Uh, Kemper, as you would expect, um, talked about how excited he was to come back to Los Angeles. And look, when you have these press conferences and the players, you know, are coming to a new team, they all kind of say the same things, right? But I think sometimes that's lip service and sometimes it's not. I think in the case of Darcy Kemper, he's being sincere uh, for a number of different reasons. Uh, Firstly, how it went for him the last couple of seasons in Washington, it was not what he wanted, ended up with him losing his starting job last year. Uh, So certainly he did admit there was frustration and disappointment about how last season went. So he's obviously excited from that standpoint to get another opportunity to get his career back on track to show that he can be a number one goalie and uh, come back to Los Angeles and be able to do that. Again, he's also excited because he is returning to L.A. You may or may not remember Kemper did play 19 games with the Kings during the 2017-18 season. He was signed as a free agent going into the season to be the backup to Jonathan Quick. Uh, he posted a very solid 10, 1, and 3 record um, before the Kings decided to trade him to Arizona. You might wonder, why did the Kings decide to trade him? Well, they they had Jonathan Quick. They knew he was going to be the number one, and they felt like, and again, this is my interpretation of it, they probably felt like, wow, Darcy Kemper is on fire right now. We might be able to get some a decent price in return for him. We're not quite sure if he's really this good. So let's uh, he's not going to play that big a role for us. Let's dish, dish him off for some assets, which is what they did. Now, Kemper said that he felt the transition back to L.A. was going to be pretty easy for him, both on and off the ice, Uh, on the ice because he still has a relationship with a lot of people in the Kings organization, in particular, Bill Ranford, who was then his goalie coach, now is the Kings director of goaltending. So there's still a relationship there. Uh, And also he talked about how he's obviously familiar with the area. It's not going to be a total shock as far as finding a place to live knowing how to get around those types of things. So he's, he's excited about the smooth transition that should take place with him returning to Los Angeles. It's not going to be a completely new experience for him. Uh, He talked about his second stint in LA 
being under different circumstances. Now, last time he was clearly the number two goalie behind Jonathan Quick. This time he's in more a, of a competitive situation alongside with goalie David Riddick. Now, the plans going into the season are for it to be a dual, row, dual role with both the goaltenders getting their opportunities. Maybe it's even a shared net for a while, but I do think there is an opportunity if one of these guys really does assert themselves to take over that number one job. I don't think that door is closed. I don't think it's going to be an either or. Um, if somebody can turn into the number one and the other guy is going to serve as a backup, I think the Kings will be fine with that. But I think the reality is even if that situation does happen, you know, Darcy Kemper or David Riddick, those guys are probably going to start around 50 games probably. And then the other guy might get 30 or so somewhere in that area is, is what my guess would be. So it's still a, going to be a situation where it is going to be a pretty shared net, I think, in the long run. Now, in the 82-game regular season last year for the Kings, uh, only three goalies played 60 or more games. So it's not that unusual in the NHL for there to be sort of a 60, 20, uh, 50, 30 kind of a split with the goaltending. Now, you do have some guys who are horses like Connor Hellebuck, one of those kind of guys. They'll play you know, 60 something games. Uh, but that's pretty rare. And, you know, you want, if you are a, a team that has playoff aspirations, you obviously want those guys to have something left in the tank once they get to the playoffs. So again, it looks like it's going to be a shared net for the Kings, but we'll see. There's still an opportunity, I think, for one of these guys to kind of be the one A to the others one B. Now, last season for the Kings, Cam Talbot played 54 games. David Riddich played 24 and Phoenix Copley played eight. Um, again, those numbers likely will be a little bit more of an even split this season with Darcy Kemper and David Riddick. At least that's the thinking going in to the season. As for Darcy Kemper, if you don't know much about him, this will be his 13th year in the NHL. So he's a veteran. He's been around the block. He just turned 34 years old, uh, spent parts of five seasons in Minnesota who drafted him in the sixth round in 2009. After his stop in LA, he played parts of four seasons in Arizona and then the past two seasons, he was in Washington, but it, it was his one season three years ago in Colorado where the Kings hope that they will see uh, a little bit more of that Darcy Kemper because that season, he backstopped the Colorado Avalanche to the Stanley Cup title. He posted a record of 37-12-4 that year with a 2.54 goals against average and a 921 save percentage. Uh, that is the Darcy Kemper the Kings would love to see. Uh, there's no doubt about that. About that. Um, the Darcy Kemper that has been on the ice the last two seasons, um, not so great. Uh, an overall record the past two years of 35, 40, and 10. His goals against average, those two combined years, was over three, and his save percentage was around 900. Uh, now, if you are a pessimist, you'll say that just about any halfway decent goalie could have won a Stanley Cup on that powerful Avalanche team. If you're an optimist, you'll say, regardless, Kemper has what it takes to win a Stanley Cup with the right team in front of him. He doesn't think he can win the Stanley Cup. He knows he can win the Stanley Cup because he has. Uh, the Kings actually have some, I think, pretty good reasons to be optimistic when it comes to Darcy Kemper. Uh, if you look at Cam Talbot, uh, he certainly bounced back in L.A. last year behind a much more solid defensive team than he had the year before in Ottawa. Uh, Talbot last year, 2.50 goals against average. Um, that was his best GAA in the last seven seasons. His 913 save percentage was a big bounce back from the year before when it was at 898. Um, so David Riddick also last season with the Kings, he posted a career best 921 save percentage and a career best 2.15 goals against average. Uh, his 13 wins were the most he's had in the past six years. So, um, you know, both these goalies kind of veteran guys, they've been around, they come to LA last season. They didn't have the greatest years coming into last year, and they both were, were pretty respectable uh, in net for the LA Kings. So again, I don't think it's unreasonable to think that maybe Darcy Kemper can show more of the form that he had in Colorado than he did the last two years in Washington. Um, Kemper will certainly get his shot uh, to bounce back here in Los Angeles. He's excited about it. Um, I think the Kings, again, we know about the deal for Pierre-Luc Dubois, certainly that was a win-win getting rid of that contract and bringing in a veteran goalie who has the potential to get the job done. Uh, hopefully, Darcy Kemper's second stint in L.A. will be as successful as his first.
Uh, up next, we want to wish a former LA King a happy birthday. That wouldn't have been the case for a lot of Kings fans had he still been on the team. We'll give you the details next here on Locked in LA Kings, your team every day. Drive passion and patience. Patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, the part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it is easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusion supply ebay is guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers well happy birthday to former la king pierre luke dubois who turned 26 today and this is more than just wishing a former king a happy birthday obviously we we did talk about this briefly on one of our uh, recent episodes you may have heard it maybe you didn't but the la kings even if they had wanted to would not have been able to buy out the contract of pierre-luc dubois as many kings fans hoped they would it was not going to be an option because of when the nhl season ended which was today with the Game 7 of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Now, Pierre-Luc Dubois, on his birthday, on his 26th birthday, would have his no-trade clause kick in, and then that would make it impossible for the Kings to buy him out or trade him. He's got a no-movement clause. You can't put him on waivers. You can't trade him. He's there whether you want him or not. Uh, And that happened. Um, the, The Kings could not buy him out until the NHL season ended, which didn't happen until today, which is his birthday. So... Uh, if, if you were one of those people that had been uh, kind of banging the drum for the Kings to buy out Pierre-Luc Dubois, well, it wasn't going to happen whether the Kings wanted to or not. It was actually an impossibility because of some interesting circumstances. But Pierre-Luc Dubois has turned 26. His no-movement clause has kicked in. He's now a member of the Washington Capitals, and uh, they've got him for the next seven years. Uh, it is not the LA Kings problem anymore. So again, happy birthday. Pierre-Luc Dubois and it is a happy birthday for him he's still getting paid and uh, he's still uh, an NHL player that a team is very interested in so so good for him not not our problem anymore Uh, the LA Kings did announce some key dates uh, for events that are coming up one of them will happen one week from uh, today on Monday and that is the annual development camp for the LA Kings at the Toyota Sports Performance Center if you're unfamiliar Uh, With the Kings Development Camp, it is an annual place where draft picks, college prospects, and select players from overseas get together for some organized on-ice training. Uh, On July 1st, next Monday, 9.30 a.m. and 3 p.m., the forward groups will take the ice there at the practice facility where the Kings are uh, in El Segundo. Uh, The defensive group will take the ice at 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Tuesday, July the 2nd, the defensive group will take the ice at 9.30 a.m., the forward group at 11 a.m., and then there's a scrimmage at 3 p.m. And then the final day of the development camp is Wednesday, July the 3rd, with the forward group taking the ice at at 9 a.m., the defensive group at 10.30 a.m., and then a scrimmage at 3 p.m. This is all free to the public. Obviously, it's during the week, so maybe it's not quite that easy to get some time off of work. Um, But who knows? Maybe you can uh, take a lunch break, take a long lunch, uh, take a late long lunch and go over there around 3 p.m. on Tuesday and Wednesday and check out the scrimmage from who knows some of the uh, young players that are in the Kings' plans for the future. Uh, you know, Quentin Byfield, Brant Clark, those guys have t- have taken part in development camp before, so it's a great opportunity to get out there and check out the future of the LA Kings if you have an opportunity to do so. Again, that starts next Monday on July the first down at the Toyota Sports Performance Center in El Segundo. Also, the Kings released their preseason schedule. Now, remember, the Kings are going to have no home preseason games due to renovations going on at Crypto.com Arena. I would assume, now I'm a season ticket holder in the NFL, along with my my wife for the LA Chargers, and we do have to pay, as part of our season ticket package, for the preseason home games. Uh, because that's not the case for the Kings, I, I would assume Kings season ticket holders are getting a little bit of a break on that. Not positive about that, but uh, anyway, 
Uh, the Kings did announce their preseason schedule. If you do want to see the Kings in the preseason in Southern California, you will have two opportunities. Um, uh, it will not be their first game, though. On uh, Monday, September the 23rd, they will be playing in Utah against the new Utah hockey team. Now, this originally was going to be a game in Salt Lake City against the Vegas Golden Knights. Obviously, though, now there is a Utah hockey team. And so that's the team the Kings will be playing on Monday, September the 23rd in Utah. They The Kings will still play Vegas uh, on the road Wednesday, September the 25th. Uh, on September the 28th, the Kings face the Ducks in the Empire Classic. That's in Ontario, the home of the rain. So that's one of the two Southern California preseason games for the Kings. The other is Monday, September 30th in Anaheim against the Ducks. And then the Kings close out the preseason with a pair of games in Quebec City, uh, Thursday, October 3rd against the Bruins, and then Saturday, October 5th against the Stanley Cup champion, Florida Panthers. Again, uh, two games in Quebec City, which is, uh, we've talked about it before, a very interesting choice for the Kings. Um, I'm sure the folks in Quebec City will enjoy getting an up-close look at NHL hockey, and the Kings um, have a little bit of a uh, different end of the preseason uh, with those two games north of the border. So there's the preseason schedule. Talked about the development camp schedule. Both of those are available online, uh, lakings.com, if you uh, if you want to check it out. Social media, uh, you can find those dates if you want to jot those down on your calendar uh, going forward. For you everydayers, those of you that listen to watch Locked on LA Kings every day, uh, coming up this week, obviously, we'll continue to talk about the NHL draft. We'll continue to speculate about some possible targets for the Kings and free agency. We'll also talk about some more player profiles for Kings that are coming up and maybe playing a bigger role this year, like we talked about Alex Turcott today. And then, of course, on Friday will be our weekly Kings fan feedback show. You want to give your thoughts on the signings of Alex Turcott and Samuel Fogimo. You want to give your thoughts on what you think their roles might be with the LA Kings this coming season. Are you optimistic those guys can fill fourth line roles or maybe even bigger roles? Let us know on our Friday fan feedback show. The email address as always is locked on Eddie at gmail.com E D D I E. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, we'd love you to leave your comments in the comment section as well. Uh, if you would like to stay interactive with us on social media, we're on X Twitter and Instagram. We are at locked on LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thanks for listening and watching this episode of Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And as always, go Kings go.